Welcome back to the show, everybody. Let's see if I can get the headlines right. They're so exciting. I can't even begin to tell you. I messed them up already. Look here. ETH level playing field may be closer than you think. We're going to take a look at it. SEC change in their tone. Number two, we have R3. Six Group launches the first regulated digital bond. We're going to get into that. Things are getting bigger, ladies and gentlemen. U.S. Senate demands legal answers from USD Tether. A change is going to come, I'm telling you. And we have here the S&P rating rates XRP, and you're going to love it, not like it. And we also have OCC affirms Brian Brooks' error and his permissioned issuances, and that is absolutely positive. But guess what the breaking news is? Let me tell you. Ripple is now going to be working with the Republic of Palau. National stablecoin running on the XRP ledger. Somebody wrote a beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here today. $2.54 trillion market cap for crypto. We're a little off from where we were this morning. 56,200 and change for Bitcoin, 4,200 and change for Ethereum. Solana coming in at $211 and some change. And Cardano is at 162, falling off 8.8% after the D list news of eToro coming from the Israeli exchange for them and Tron. XRP at 103 this morning. The whole market's off. I, excuse me. Actually, my apologies. And looking right here, the range of XRP right now, 102.95 on the low side, 107.87 on the high side. We'll keep an eye on it. We got some fundamental news. It's absolutely bullish. The numbers are brought to you by Link2.com, ladies and gentlemen. If you are not accredited, you must be accredited to buy these products. But if you are not accredited, I highly encourage you to register with this platform. You should be forward thinking for the future. This is an opportunity to get into many different sectors as well as blockchain and crypto and the private tech equity behind them. And I tell you right now, if you're not accredited, join this because you can get access to extreme, extreme data for all of these companies. And it is incredible because all of these data points are brought to you by a combination and collaboration between Link2 and CB Insights, the membership north of $300,000 a year to get access to this. But you get it for free if you register. Make sure you do so. Taking a look here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're stepping up our game and you're about to find out why. Now, all of you have probably heard this little clip where Joseph Lubin explains how you can create multiple fake accounts and disguise your identity when investing in the early days of Ethereum. This is why I say and I tag the Justice Department, the Criminal Division, the FBI, and the SEC as well. And I'm encouraging each one of you to retweet this and tag these agencies. If the Congress doesn't want to take issue with it, if we don't have enough money to back them to make the change, let's start contacting the criminal divisions of the Justice Department and the FBI and find out if they think what we already know. Why was the Ethereum founder Joseph Lubin allowed to obfuscate U.S. regulations and laws when touching U.S. investors? And why was he allowed to fundraise and teach investors how to create fake identities? That, ladies and gentlemen, is not how a fundraise go if it is the first ICO or not. It's not how it's supposed to go. There should be accountability there, and we may be getting it. And this is why I tell you to keep up the fight. Look at this in right here. Level playing field may be closer than you think. John Deaton tells us right here, the SEC is now stating, please be advised that the SEC has not made any public statements regarding the status of Ethereum. Uh-oh, they just distanced themselves from the William Hinman speech that they've been holding on to for many, many years now. And it says here, it states the above, despite the Hinman speech being on the SEC website, I wouldn't be surprised if it's soon removed from the speech. Let me tell you, uh, this is interesting here. This is, look at this. Dear investors, thank you for contacting the SEC. Please be advised the Ethereum is not registered with the SEC. Additionally, please be advised that the SEC has not made any public statements regarding the status of Ethereum. You see that distance they just put between William Hinman and the agency? 
They've been using his letter as guidance, and now they're starting to put a bit of distance between them and that letter. Additionally, please note the determination on whether a cryptocurrency is considered security depends on the characteristics and use of cur- cryptocurrency. Moreover, cryptocurrency exchanges are not regulated security exchanges. Since we, uh, you are seeking guidance about cryptocurrency investing, we recommend you carefully uh, review our director's take on the matter, blah, 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 blah. Nevertheless, you were seeing the SEC for the first time really start to distance herself from the William Hinman letter that we've so many times shown on this channel. Different people, uh, Robert Jackson and many others, Valerie Hispanic, you know, many others from the SEC that actually said, you know, the William Hinman speech is the guidance that we're looking, you know, it's it, it, if it wasn't so costly to this entire digital asset space, it'd be laughable, but it isn't. Right. And that's where we're at here. And this may be a different pivot and view coming from the SEC. And we'll see where this goes. But until then, we need to be tagging the Justice Department, the criminal division, the FBI. Let's find out what they think. I'm interested to think what they think. And if there's nothing wrong, we'll be glad to know it. Right. Okay. Right here, we see U.S. Senate demands legal answers on Tether stable coin from CEO by next month. Ten days, ladies and gentlemen, that's what they've been given. And it says here in this article that the U.S. Senate Banking Committee Chairman Sherrod Brown has written a letter to the Chief Executive Officer of Tether Holdings, and it's about the stable coin that they issue and how it is backed. And take a look at the letter. It is pretty thorough right here. It says, uh, I write and request the information regarding Tether Stablecoin, and it talks about the President's Working Group. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but what I am going to show you here is this. Please describe the basic purchase, exchange, or minting process by which customers can acquire Tether for U.S. dollars. In your answer, explain any relevant limitations, qualifications to engaging in the completing that process. Please detail the process redeem Tether to U.S. dollar. Also identify any requirements limiting, including minimum redemption size, waiting period since Tether inception. How many tokens have there been issued? How many have been redeemed? I'm telling you, these are the questions that have really needed to be asked from day one here, right? And well, let's just finish here. Brief, briefly characterize the market operational conditions or redemption to Tether for U.S. dollars, another digital asset for purposes of answering this question. Do not list or describe legal or regulatory limitation currently described in user agreement terms of service. It goes on to say, please identify any trading platforms that have enhanced capabilities, privileges, special arrangements with the respect to Tether, identifying those features and their basis, contractual or common control. Please summarize any internal reviews or studies your company has conducted about how specific levels of redemption would affect Tether, including convertibility into U.S. dollars or would affect financial position for your company. Please respond by December 3rd. I'm telling you, this is getting pretty damn interesting. And look, all of this comes on the heels of of understanding some other news that we're going to get into in just a second here. We are thrilled that Six Group has launched the world's first digital bond on its regulated digital market infrastructure. Infrastructure SDX Global harnessing the power, sir, power, excuse me, of core to blockchain. Discover how this is going to transform financial market infrastructure. I'm going to tell you real quick how it's going to transform it. It's a bond market being digitized, ladies and gentlemen. And if they can do it here, they can do it with everything. The bond market is the backbone to any monetary system in the world. Period. Full stop. That is extremely extremely powerful news. Don't believe it. It's still true. So is this S&P Standard & Poor's global rating system as of September 2021. Shout out to TAIG. XRP accounts as a bridge currency to other fiat currencies exchanged on the Ripple platform. Ripple is a real-time gross settlement system, currency exchange, and remittance network. s and not confused. Why is the SEC? Yeah, I tell you. You take a look right here. It says XRP acts as a bridge currency to other fiat currencies exchanged in the Ripple platform. Ripple is a real-time gross settlement system, currency exchange, and remittance network. No confusion there. No confusion there. But for some reason, it's still pretty clear to Gary Gensler that it's a security. This is a reminder right here from JP Morgan that we look at the growing list of new blockchain-based systems, including Ripple, which aims to facilitate cross-border payments between global banks in seconds compared to days for traditional systems at lower costs. You know, th- this is more evidence right here 
that I believe the legal case is a very real legal case, but it's also as much a vetting process, I say, and I do say today that this is even more evidence of the matter. And we have even more evidence because we're getting ready to hear that the XRP ledger is going to be used to back a nationally backed stable coin for the Republic of La uh, Palau. And you're going to find some very, very interesting information about who's governing that little province there in just one second. This is a reminder to the U.S. Tether information that OCC affirms Brian Brooks's error permissions issuances for banks to handle crypto are absolutely given the green light here. I covered this in deeper length and in, uh, in-depth length in the first video this morning. Make sure you go check that out as well. But let's move on to this, ladies and gentlemen, because this is straight fire right here. After partnering with Bhutan Central Bank in September, Ripple has also scored a deal with the Republic of Palau. And I've got some stuff for you to see here. San Francisco-based enterprise blockchain provider Ripple has announced a partnership with Republic of Palau, a tropical country in the western Pacific region that consists of roughly 340 tightly clustered islands. Initially, the company will work on developing cross-border payments in the nation. It also on track to help Palau to launch its first state-backed stablecoin, backed by the U.S. dollar. And isn't that interesting? That could act as the country's national currency, according to the president there. It says here, the first phase of the partnership will focus on a cross-border payment strategy and exploring options to create a national digital currency, providing the citizens of Palau with greater financial access. Palau decided to partner with Ripple because of the speed and efficiency of the XRP ledger, as well as the company's extensive track record of developing blockchain-based solutions. Now, this is a great comment here from Monica Long at Ripple X. Incredible potential for Ripple's partnership with Palau. The world's first government-backed national stablecoin could come to the XRP ledger thanks to its custom token functionality next year. How about that one? But it gets better, ladies and gentlemen, because Palau is a territory that consists of an archipelago uh, located uh, in the Pacific Ocean in most populous islands. And then it shows here, what country does Palau belong to? The United States. Oh, <laughs> you don't say. So the same United States that Palau belongs to, where the same U.S. SEC is currently suing Ripple. Remember how I told you that that legal, legal case is as much a vetting process as it is anything else? Any questions? Any questions? Anyone in the room still unsure about where we're going? The United States is behind this. And if they didn't want this to happen, it wouldn't happen in Palau or anywhere else. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we got great things coming to us. That's what I believe. My speculation, of course, but am I on a thin limb here? Or am I just standing right on the tree? That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. I'm here for four and five digit XRP. And I think this was a, this was a giant step towards that goal, ladies and gentlemen. I really do believe that. And I think there's a lot more to come that we are not even aware of yet. Make sure you check out all the links in the description box and the comment section. They are great products and services I use each and every day. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a pure VPN deal going on right now. It's a five-year, $1.33 a month. Hide your identity online. Get multiple SIGs so you can have it on many different uh uh, computers and apps and wherever you need it. I'm telling you, it is a great deal. I use it all the time. It makes me feel safe when I'm online and you can check it out too, but you got to click the links to get the deal. I'll catch all of you on the next one.